in this video we're going to take a look at servicing, maintaining, cleaning, setting, and starting the Stilt FS280 brush cutter, also known as a trimmer, leader machine. This machine normally will need cleaning after usage since dust and dirt is most likely to accumulate on its internal and exterior surface. So the first thing we want to do is disassemble the machine for cleaning. So before disassembling of the machine, you're going to want to get one of these purple blaster degreaser. It's the perfect solvent for cleaning the machine. Another thing you're going to need is this spray bottle for spraying the solvent onto the machine. Then finish doing so, you're going to need to remove this cover, which is also recommended when operating the machine. You will completely spray the brush cutter on all its surfaces, allowing the solvent to soak to help remove grease and oil. The next part is to use this tool that is provided when you purchase the machine for removing these four screw for the pull start. Once the screw are removed, you will simply detach it from the machine and you see it's pretty straightforward. There is no specific way for replacing it. You just place it in position and the clutch would automatically engage into the coupler for the crankshaft. So once you remove this, you're going to need to spray it with the purple blaster. Now the reason you want to keep the machine clean is to help it operate in a cool condition. You see when you have dirt and dust built up on the machine, especially on the fin of the engine, it will cause the engine to run a little hotter than it normally should. The next thing we want to remove is the cover for the air cleaner. Using the same tool for removing the pull start section, we will remove these two bolts for the cover for the air cleaner. Now when you remove this and you take a look in here, you're going to see all kind of contaminant inside this fiber filter. There is also another filter which is like a screen for helping filtration on the fiber filter. So now when we take a look in here, you're going to see contaminants and dust also build up in there. It does not mean that dust and contaminant is going into the carburetor. What it means is that that is a separate area from the filter cover, which is this part for filtering the air. So most of the time you want to have this clean when it's removed. And this part will show contaminant that could possibly enter the carburetor if you do not have a filter. So we want to close this choke and use the same purple blaster for spraying out this area. You want to keep this area clean because the more dirt that is built up into this area is the more likely the filter will become more contaminant, restrictive, preventing air or clogging the air from getting into the carburetor. Now when we take a look at this fiber filter, you can see the outside is clean. This is the part that will face the cover and this is the side that will face that area where all the dirt is. So you will use the same purple blaster spraying this media, this fiber, for cleaning it out and placing it for drying in the sun. So you will see there's fuel residue where the carburetor hole is for this filter. That's because that's excess fuel drained back from the carburetor onto the filter media. This you can prevent by controlling the fuel that the engine is consuming and in another section of this video we're going to show you how to make that setting at this area here. Also do not eliminate 
this fitting which is for the idle air speed the engine idle speed and the two fuel setting that we will talk about later another part is you don't want any of the solvent to go into the carburetor so you're gonna to want to have this lean a little so the solvent just stay to the edge if possible you could open the choke and place some plastic or tissue in there for blocking the solvent to go in but it's not going to cause any damage what's important is you want to clean the machine once the machine is saturated you will use a paintbrush for getting into areas where your fingers may not be able to get into and just brush the dirt out of all the areas where it can be noticed this will be the preferable way for cleaning the complete machine. Once you're finished brushing the machine with the paintbrush, you're going to need some form of pressure water for washing all in the tight spot. So you're going to use the same bottle that you had the purple blaster in with water. You're going to fill it with water now and you're just going to spray it down. And that spray is going to be able to get into all those tight areas for pressuring it out of its location. You're going to do this completely all around to the machine with the water, washing the purple blaster and the grease dirt out of its tight compartment instead of having to use some different type of pressure method like a pressure washer or holding it under the sink this is the preferable way. For cleaning the bar section of the machine, you will use this Brillo 3M Scotch-Brite and simply just scrub the bar section, like all these area right here, with the Purple Blaster, the perfect cleaner for cleaning, and everything will be removed. The foot section will be soaked with the Purple Blaster. It's perfect for emulsifying the dirt and removing it from the aluminum. Now just to show you how powerful this cleaner is, look at the head, or I should say the foot. Look at the cleanliness of it. So using this purple blaster, fully concentrated, is the easiest way for cleaning the foot. Now when you're going to be ready to clean these component on the body section, you want to make sure you mix the purple blaster with 50-50 water and purple blaster. Do not use the purple blaster fully concentrated on the machine because it could remove the paint and also eat away at some of the component. So here's another angle of how superior this cleaner is for cleaning. It's also damaging to the hand so you want to make sure you use a glove. Once the machine is finished cleaning, you're going to want to place all the component in the sun, especially this fiber element, for it to become dry. And then you could reassemble it for operation and working duty. Let's take a look at setting the machine for operation. You have two fuel control and an idle. The idle is on the bottom. The two fuel control is a high setting that is on the outside and a low setting that's on the inside. The low setting is to control fuel at idle speed. The high setting is for controlling fuel when throttling the machine during operation. So I already have my machine here set perfectly for my operation. So you also must take into consideration that the ambient air temperature where this machine is being operated is approximately 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. We're also approximately 1000 to approximately 1500 feet above sea level. The higher the sea level you go and operate this machine, the fuel would need adjusting. 
Also changes in temperature, for example, if the temperature drops, the fuel will need adjusting. So let's take a look at how many turns I have the low setting at. So I have the stilt mark on this stilt screwdriver that's provided by the manufacturer set to the top. So we're going to close this idle screw all the way in just to get an idea. So that's one turn and that's about it. Now I will return that screw to the position that I had where it was set perfect. So now you know when you get your machine you're going to need to set that low idle screw which is to control fuel for idling one turn counterclockwise. Let's take a look at the high screw which is for controlling fuel while the machine is in operating or at full throttle. So I have the screwdriver in position. The stilt mark on the screwdriver is up. Let's turn it all the way in. So that's one turn. And the stilt mark is on the bottom. So that's one and a half turn. So we will need to set this high idle screw setting one and a half turn. So the inside was one turn and the outside was one and a half turn. Once you have that setting to where I currently have it, you're most likely going to have success in operating the machine. The next part is the idle screw. Once you have the engine started and running, then you will be able to set the idle screw to approximately 700 to 800 RPM. Now there are tools that are sold on the aftermarket for you to be able to detect the RPM of the engine. But first, anytime I operate this machine, I like to remove this cover. The reason being is if you notice when the machine is in operation, this tail will swing back and forth, back and forth. And what this does is that it creates a wind flow for the muffler, the engine, and everything else to maintain cool. If you keep that cover on the machine, you're going to notice the front of the machine and the body of the machine become excessively hot. That's because the heat is trapped into this compartment. Now, in detecting the RPM, you're going to need what's called a RPM detector that you could place on this spark plug and it will display the RPM of the engine. Now when starting the machine, you do not want to pull this trigger all the way back. For example, when you turn on the ignition, you do not want to pull this trigger all the way back and lock it. You do not want to start the machine with the throttle control in that position because when the machine starts, it's going to race at a high RPM and this could damage the internal rotating assembly. So you always want to make sure your throttle is at closed position with the ignition on. Now you're going to get ready to pull start on the cord to start the engine. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you close the choke. And you're going to make about three to four pull on the cord on the cord what this is going to do is it's going to create a vacuum a suction condition inside the carburetor to pull the fuel and air into the engine you're going to know when this happened because the engine will try to start and shut down once you get indication of that start and shutdown you will open the choke to the open position and continue to pull the cord until the engine start. So we're going to try that now. First thing we want to do is close the choke. Our throttle ignition switch is on. And one, two. So that's the sign that the engine is ready to start. We will now turn the choke to the open position and continue.
that is what you want for an idle speed. You do not want the engine to race at a high RPM because remember the fuel and the oil have to get into the engine to lubricate the internals. At a low RPM, you're reducing any destruction to the rotary assemble or high emissions. So let's shut the engine down by switching the ignition switch on the handle off. Now that we have the machine shut down, another thing that's very important in daily usage is the foot and blade location. Now we have a section to attach a guard. You could use the guard with the slasher blade or with the string attachment. What's important is that every day you want to make sure you use the tool that came from the manufacturer for removing this plug, for checking the lubricant inside the gears. So you're going to receive this, which is a Super Lube FS from the manufacturer to inject the fill inside here. I also like to use this differential axle gear oil as an additional lube for slushing this grease around inside this housing while the machine is in operation. It is very important that every day you check the oil or lube inside this housing to maintain safety of the bearing and the gear device. One last important thing is the fuel mixture. You're always going to want to use the stilt oil that's recommended from the manufacturer. You have a measurement container here for mixing the oil to the appropriate amount of gasoline that's going to be used in the machine. So you don't want to mix the oil and the amount of gasoline exactly for the machine. You want to take approximately one gallon of gasoline and you will mix that with approximately 60 to 80 milliliter of oil. Now you have all the measurement here based on one, two, three, four, five liter. So this is very important that you use the stilt oil. I will not recommend that you use any other additional two cycle engine oil. Very important, you want to make sure you're wearing a respirator and a goggle for face protection. It is also important that you wear a long sleeve shirt, long boots, and preferably a coverall for protecting the front of your